Hi, my name's Aruna D'Souza, I'm a writer. Um, and I just wanted to point out that one of the things, among the many things that I do, one of the things is that I've been invited by um, the education department that runs programming like this, as well as outreach to the community in various ways, uh, to do a reading group with them about the issues and the ideas and the readings one has to do before a museum even starts to talk about uh, things like diversity and inclusion. And so um, there is some pretty amazing stuff going on here, but unfortunately, uh, as with most museums, it's often not happening in the spaces we might like it to see it most visibly, um, i.e. curatorial. So I just wanted to point that out. Today is January 20th, a day that many of us will have been anticipating with dread since November 9th. Indeed, we may have been trying to stave off its arrival by starting to organize, by taking part in protest, by becoming engaged, by becoming enraged. By dreaming of emoluments, by imagining recounts, by poring over intelligence reports, by analyzing voting data, by writing, signing, emailing, phoning, tweeting. By trying to deploy shame against the shameless, by groping for the reset button, by clinging to hope. This day has arrived anyway, despite our best effort, efforts and our moments of magical thinking. Its arrival doesn't mean that the hope was misplaced or those efforts wasted. We need hope more than ever, the irrational, quixotic, desperate hope that things can get better, even if we know that for so many of us, this moment is just another point in the long march towards the worse, not the beginning of the decline. The 2016 presidential campaign, the misogyny, the crassness, the silencing of voices, the gaslighting, the violence and the hatred, the racism and the xenophobia, the claims of corruption that obscured actual corruption, and did I mention the misogyny, was traumatizing. I heard someone compare it to holding one's breath underwater for too long and then rising to the surface on election day to finally take a gulp of air, only to find the surface frozen. We are caught collectively in this impossible, paralyzing, airless state. Our only choice is to adapt, to evolve, or maybe to devolve, to learn to, again, to breathe as we once did, back before we emerged from the water and the mud eons ago. To learn from those artists and activists and citizens who have been declaring we can't breathe for a long time now. And to recognize, too late, but still, that their plight is ours too. To learn to write and make images and create sounds and forge ideas that provide oxygen in an atmosphere that is choking us. I speak out today and I march tomorrow not because I want to declare my opposition to what will come to pass. I do it as an acknowledgement that everything we fear has already happened. For people of color, for women and queers, for immigrants, for the poor, for Muslims here and abroad, for victims of our wars, for victims of our economy, for so many others. I do it now because I should have done it before. I do it now because the singular threat we face is not that of a single man or a single party, and it's not that even that people will suffer. People have already been suffering. I do it now because this may be the last moment to exercise our freedom to resist unless we resist. I speak out today because speaking out is the most potent weapon in a democracy, and I will use it now. I speak out today because speaking out makes me part of a we, part of a collective gathering of souls, part of a messy, sometimes even ugly, indefinable coalition that will, I hope, shamble its way to a better place. Thank you for being here with me. I'm sorry it took me so long. But don't worry, I'll catch up. Just put me to work. <laughs>